Reminds me of a funny story because when I was looking for my wife, uh, I really wasn't looking, and she just like rolled into the bookstore I was working at and started asking me about Islam. So I told her about it, and at the end of the conversation, she was like, "Well, if I die, uh, not believing in, in Allah and His Messenger, will I go to hell?" And I said, "Yeah," because <laughs> you know I'm like, "Bam," you know, honest like that with her. So she comes back the next day and she goes, "Well, uh, how can I be a Muslim?" So well, I start telling her about you know how to say the Shahada and stuff like that. So then she took the Shahada and we were married four days later. And so I kind of like, was like, well, now that you're a Muslim, <laughs> you need a husband? You know, I got yeah, all this guy, he can be your... Yeah. <laughs> so that's the way, you know, since you just got married, that reminded me of, uh, of yeah. that with my wife, the way I did that, man. So what was it like when you were looking for your wife, Avril? Well, you know, it's an accidental thing. I wasn't planning getting married. It was a uh, sight at first, fall in love. Then the marriage thing came on later on. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the romantic way. <laughs> <laughs> the romantic way. Uh, yeah. Now yeah. for me, it was uh, like we were, we've been friends, like before we even you know like became you know like uh, like each other and stuff like that. We were just just friends, and then alhamdulillah, like we we were like introduced to Islam in the like in the beginning. So we used to go to lectures together, and you know I used to take her to the lecture with me, and and we we like you know things grew up. Like we we, so we you went slowly, into you slowly went to Islam together and you slowly grew yeah, in Islam and then exactly which was very nice and Inshallah. then we got married and we're expecting a baby now. Oh, Inshallah. That's, so, a, <laughs> yeah. Inshallah. that's a good that's thing. one thing. It's it's crazy because you know I know how to deal with you know I've never imagined that I could have a child. Babies are hard, man. But yeah. they're gonna, never going to love anything like and you love your baby, like you love your kid. Exactly. How can you how can you like raise your child in an Islamic way in a world like this? You know because. It's and that's uh, why the sheikhs come by to break that down for yeah. him. Abdul well, has kids that are old. I can tell you it's not an easy thing. <laughs> and you, you have all right to be worried yeah. because yeah. It, raising kids is a difficult thing. And as much as you may have a plan and you want to raise them in a certain way, yeah. they might have a, a mind of their own. How can you know? that be? <laughs> <laughs> they can't well, have a mind of their own. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can coach them, but... They will not always take the coaching. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you need to be, I think you need to be very friendly with your child. Like, for him to open up for you all the time. Like, I was with my mom. She used to be very friendly with me. Because um, the difference of age between me and my mom is like 16 years. So she's she basically, got me she's like a kid herself. Exactly. Yeah. So, things between me and my mom. Whenever I started smoking, when I, you know, before, now I don't smoke anymore. Allah Allah Allah. 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 <laughs> but, you know, like, when I, when I did that. Smoking's haram. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, right now, alhamdulillah, I don't do it anymore. But the thing is that what helped me to, to quit is because I told my mom right away. Mm, she I bragged told, on you. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> like that's right. <laughs> she threw things at me. You know. yeah, see, my mom and dad she didn't even try to raise us, man. They just sounded like, you know, and when we messed up, they're, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then don't do it again. But there was yeah. never like, you know, we well, shouldn't do this because yeah. or anything like that. It was just, you know, you messed up, you got you got disciplined. And yeah, I think really I think work. I think I should be a friend, but at the same time, I don't know. I'm a bit I'm a bit nervous. So. Yeah, when I when I had my first kid, I was wicked nervous, man. Wicked yeah. nervous. I was like. Oh, man. You know, You're I remember afraid. my wife's at the hospital. She's mm -hmm. giving birth. And I'm like, what am I going to do? You know, I'm going to be a dad. I'm going to be responsible for somebody's life, for somebody's making sure that they, they can speak, they, that they have food, that they have clothes. I remember all this, like, this, it was like someone was standing on the back of my neck, you know. Ah, now you're a dad. <laughs> you know, and I was like, man, yeah. what am I going to do? But it be, yeah. I still have no idea what and I'm doing. And the diapers, man. <laughs> The diapers, they have... A That's <laughs> why you have a wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, look, the baby needs to be changed. Yeah. You kind of go in the other room. Uh, uh, yeah. That's the like a budget on its own. <laughs> the diapers. <laughs> the kids got to be kept in a good environment, man. Yeah. Like, for instance, me uh, living uh, in the United States, I have left here uh, a bad environment and coming out here, bringing my children in an Islamic environment, hopefully, um, sure. The environment altogether is not totally Islamic, of but yeah. I bring them out here, their Islamic schools, their Quranic memorization, 
yeah. Arabic teaching. I saw for that, you know. Mm, helps or not? Yeah, you I gotta get, I, get I, them. I have somebody knocking at the door. Oh, yeah. I'll check the shit. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Good to see you, Ismail. Nice to see you. Always a pleasure to see you. Barakallahu feek. Tafadl, tafadl. Have a seat. Assalamu alaikum. You have a company here. Assalamu alaikum. We do have company. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. You guys go ahead and introduce yourselves to the sheikh. and introduce you. Good to see you, brothers. How are you? I'm Abdullah from New York. Ahlan wa sahlan. Hussain from Cairo. Good to see you, Hussain. MashaAllah. Muhammad Salah. So how you been? Alhamdulillah. 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 As a matter of fact, this is a, a quite an important issue. Um, in the past several days, I've been looking into a hadith which expresses about the most profitable investment in life. This is a sound hadith was collected by Imam Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says that whenever the servant of Allah dies, all his good deeds will come to end, except for three. The first is an ongoing charity. The second is a knowledge that's useful, which you inherit. Mm. And the third is a righteous child. And this is actually the subject which we're going to be talking wish about. For. Mm. <laughs> yes. We all wish for it. I mean, I mean. You know, <laughs> even though there are three ways and three actions, when I studied the hadith and analyzed the hadith, I found out that you can get three of them in one, in the righteous child. How? By raising a righteous son or daughter teaching them how to pray, how to fast, giving them good manners and so on. This is a useful knowledge which you have taught. So if they are righteous, then once you die, they will pray for you, remember you in every prostration, in every sujood. The prayer that you have taught them, which they will teach their, their children and their grandchildren and so on, the Prophet ﷺ says that one who guides something which is good, he receives the reward of everyone who acts like it, similar to him, oh, without okay. affecting his reward. Accordingly, when you examine the hadith, you found that by raising a good son or a good daughter, you get three in one, an ongoing charity, a useful knowledge, and a righteous child who will pray for you after you depart from this life. I've read that hadith a million times, probably, and I've never, ever got that meaning out of it. I never ever saw that in there, that all three words. Well, you know, sometimes you have to reflect and ponder. You do not just read. You know, even though the Prophet ﷺ delivered the good news and the glad tidings in this hadith, but there is an ayah which has a severe warning. The ayah is ayah number six of Surah Al Tahrim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاب شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. The ayah means, O you who believe, protect yourselves and your families against a fire of hell. The fuel of this fire will be men and stones. The guards of this fire will be angels, strong and stern, again is the dwellers of fires. They do not disobey Allah in any command He commands them to do. So it's a responsibility, and it's a big task to do. The Prophet ﷺ says that everyone, everyone is a guardian, in a way or another. كُلُّكُمْ رَعًا And everyone will be held accountable for those who are under his guardianship, yeah. will be asked about his responsibilities. And the biggest responsibility in life is raising your children. Exactly. Which makes me so tough nervous. Tough. <laughs> Toughest job you'll ever love to hate. Well, <laughs> this is not necessarily a matter to scare you. Rather, it's to encourage you and to learn more and more. Exactly. The beauty of our religion that it did not leave anything without giving you a manual as how to take care of it. Yes. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ actually instructed us as how to raise your children from the very beginning, even before marriage. Because Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said that Allah the Almighty is going to ask 
the father about his son before asking the son whether he was youthful to his father or not. Why is that? Imam Ibn al-Qayyim said because the son has rights upon the father as well as the father have rights upon the son. Yeah. So it's mutual rights. And those rights go <coughs> on the way they begin even before marriage. Because the Prophet ﷺ indicated that among the rights of the children upon the parents, choosing a good mother for them, choosing good names for them. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, yeah. a woman may be married for one of four reasons. For her beauty, for her wealth, for her family status, and or for her religion and religious commitment. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, so make the good choice by choosing the one who have the religious commitment. That, of course, doesn't mean that you should ignore the earlier three factors. No. If you can find the four good qualities, you're a lucky one. <laughs> but if you have the choice, yes. <laughs> you think you're a very lucky one because yes. you can't find all four. If you know one shake, can you let me know? You find one each, one each woman. <laughs> well, I'm still looking. Yeah. That's why we have four wives, exactly. Yeah, exactly. One for each one and one, one with each family. One with each quality. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So the interesting thing in this hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu says that if you have to make a choice, then choose the one who have the religious commitment. This is the one who would last. This is the one who would take care of your children protect you in your absence and protect her modesty and chastity. So this is an advice which is very, very valuable advice of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in another hadith, الدنيا متاع وخير متاعها الزوجة الصالحة This worldly life is all about temporary pleasure. And the best of this pleasure is a righteous wife. Righteous wife yeah. uh, hold that thought. Everyone else has coffee. But you. You want some well, coffee? I don't mind. Thank you so much. Okay, let me go and get some. Please. All right. Huda TV strives to bring you, our viewers, the best in Islamic programming. Please send your comments and suggestions to feedback at huda.tv. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. The coffee hey, is here. Thank there you, there brother. Jazakallah. Sorry, I missed you, man. Thank yeah, you. My manners are absolutely hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living traffic. All, all my life in the States. Yeah, traffic. <laughs> there, you know. Thank That's you. Jazakallah. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. Well, back to our subject. So that uh, marriage has so many benefits, uh, some of which not too many people know. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated fi surat al rum talking about marriage, saying, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created for you from among yourselves, spouses, so that you might find repose in them, rest and tranquility. And he has put between you, between the spouses, mercy and affection. Another benefit, another purpose of getting married is having a children. No. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, when one was getting married, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُودَ الْوَلُودَ فَإِنِّي مُبَاهِمْ بِكُمُ الْأُمَّمَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ well, if you're getting married, then you choose one who is loving, caring, and able to bear children. Yeah. One might say, and well, loving and caring, we can find out about that. But how about bearing children? Yeah, don't have extra vision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm encouraging my wife. She's working as a teacher in the, uh, in the nursery. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm very happy that she's doing this because she's learning, she's, she's teaching the youngsters. You know, they, they learning how to do it at home. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, yeah, keep practicing because, you know, that's a good <laughs> thing, you know. Yes, it's all about practice. But unfortunately, in many cases, uh, many people practice the wrong practices. Of course. And yeah. that's why <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us what we call the menu as how to practice the right practices. Yeah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Brother Aftal, 
فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأُمَمَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Indicating one of the purposes and the great mean, uh, meanings of marriage is to have children to uh, add another asset to the Muslim Ummah. The Prophet ﷺ says, get married since I will be delighted with your outnumbering other nations on the Day of Judgment. تَزَوَّجُوا فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأُمَّمَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And it's a, it's, a, it's a very difficult task to yeah. find the right person. Of course. Yes. This is where the initial planning starts and final finding the, uh, the proper wife. Exactly. Do you think no, people think make it too hard on them, on themselves? I mean, I know brothers who like you say, well, I found you a wife. She's uh, this and she's this and she's this and she's this. And the first question they ask you is, what does her father do? <laughs> and do you think brothers sometimes make it too hard on themselves in finding what a wife? What does the father no. has to do with... Uh, well, no. Exactly. Really, sometimes it is very important to understand about the family status and situation, you know. And not only that, but the practices of the family members, whether they're praying or not, whether they're religiously committed or not, this is very, very important. Because I remember once when I was, uh, before I, I play, made plans to get married, I contacted an older sheikh. And I was consulting him about a woman who is not from my background. So he uh, advised me with a very important advice. He said, look who's going to be your children's uncle. Mm. This is very, very interesting. When you think about it deeply, you understand what the sheikh meant. Because you do not only marry the girl. You marry the entire family. The entire family, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. That's why the process of ijab and qabul, acceptance and approval, it has to be from both families, not only right. the individuals, or otherwise, down the road we will have so many negative consequences, God forbid. It's important to look at the family background, because now your child will have to interact with his family. Yeah. And if the, if your <laughs> family... You like a fool, you don't want your kids around <laughs> That's right. Uh, that's why actually the Prophet ﷺ considered family is one of the factors which a man might look for in a woman to get married to. وَلِحَسَبِهَا <laughs> No. Uh, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Takhayyaru li nutafikum Takhayyaru li nutafikum Fankihu al-akifa wa ankihu al-akifa This is a wonderful hadith which means the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said make a good choice for your seed where are you going to put your seed so ankihu al-akifa marry to worthy women Worthy of being a mother of your of children. The seed, mm -hmm. Exactly. Child, yeah. yeah, you're looking for fertile ground. Exactly. exactly. Good ground. <laughs> Good ground to <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, to and marry your daughters to worthy men. Yeah. And the Prophet wasallam warned parents or wali who get offers and proposals from good people, good men, and they turn them down, saying that, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَأَمَانَتَهُ فَزَوِّجُوا إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَظِيمٌ If someone proposes to you to marry to your daughter, whom you trust his religion, his attitude, his behavior, and his amana, then why not? And if you keep rejecting good people just simply because they're poor and so on, that would lead to spreading mischief and corruption on earth. It's like those ads you see in the, the magazines back in the States, you know, where it says, uh, man from hyperbad looking for woman oh. from hyperbad. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Must be PhD. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I remember that. I once held a, a survey at Trice University uh, out of Houston, and amazingly, uh, amongst too many uh, teen uh, boys and girls, they chose number one, their first choice would be a man for the girls. They said that they would choose a man who have some religious commitment before the job, before wealth, before the look and anything. And also, the boys said that I would prefer to choose a woman who has manners and religious commitment before anything else, which is a very, very good sign. Of course, the survey was done amongst mostly Muslims. That was a very, very good sign. You know what I really wanted to talk about is, since we're all men, we're talking about choosing the wife, choosing the wife. It's not only about choosing the wife, what it's about, about the choosing the spouse. <laughs> yeah, no, the you wife know? Is spouse. Exactly. Likewise, so if you're a wali, if you're a guardian, if you're a father of a girl, a brother, an uncle, or, or, or and you have somebody who's asking for your uh, daughter, for instance, based on what would you give him a word? 
and you try to convince your daughter. You understand that, yes, the wali have the right to process the marriage contract, but he doesn't have the right to force the girl of course, to marry to I anyone. Have, have so the approval of the girl is necessary as well. But, you know, trying to convince he's a good person, he makes that much a month, he has this kind of car, these are not the factors based on you choose uh, the life made for your daughter. You know? I would say I would rather have my daughter be a, a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife to a man <laughs> who's religious than to, uh, than to a man who's a criminal well, because he has money and status. Uh, now, uh, w- once again, we have to emphasize on a very important fact that a person might be and could be wealthy and meanwhile have good manners and religiously committed. You do not assume that every wealthy person or most wealthy people uh, do not pray. No, this is not necessarily true. We have to clarify that so that people wouldn't think that uh, if I have a wealthy person who's approaching my wife, I'd say no. And my daughter, I would say no. Exactly. No. no. If they have money and they have, you know, they're religious. <laughs> they're <fun to> them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. You, want you, too may much? Have, <laughs> you may have a, a religious brother. He appears to be religious. He attends a mosque regularly. He prays fast and everything. But then... He's not good at being a husband. Mm. When you have the trial now of being a husband, then it may not come to right. I'm very happy you brought this up. How would we know? Yes, exactly. Because I remember once uh, Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. Mm -hmm. He heard a man was recommending another in his presence. So he asked him, are you his neighbor? He said, no. He said, well, did you ever travel with him? He said, no. He said, well, did you invest some money with him? He said, not that even. He said, then be quiet. <laughs> do you recommend him. You don't know him. You don't say he's an honest person if you do not do any of that with him. Just seeing a person going to the masjid really is not sufficient to judge his manners and say he would be a good candidate. So, uh, to choose for my daughter or for <laughs> my sister, I have to be very, very careful. And I have to take every measure of verifying whether this person is really a good candidate or not. So you need to look at where you're, where who's going to plant the seed and who's the and exactly where the seed's be planted. exactly the, so soil. the sower and the soul. Exactly, so. exactly. Well, now after you get married, uh, this is not it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yes, many youth come to Boys me, yet to come, uh, and I'm very, very <laughs> glad because many of the you know new Muslims, uh, they come to me and ask me, Sheikh, I'm getting married tomorrow. And if I can attend the wedding, they ask me, what am I supposed to do in respect of everything from A to Z? So I advise them with what the Prophet ﷺ advised us. There is a very important hadith which was collected by Imam al-Bukhari, a Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ says, uh, لو أن أحدكم إذا أراد أن يأتي أهله قال بسم الله اللهم جنبنا الشيطان وجنب الشيطان ما رزقتنا Prophet ﷺ says that whenever any of you is approaching his wife to have a relationship with her, embrace her sexually, he should say, Bismillah. Listen carefully to this supplication and memorize it. Every one of us needs it. Prior to every time you embrace your wife, both spouses should say, Bismillah. Allahumma jannibna shaytan, which means, O oh Allah, Keep Satan away from us. وَجَنِّ بِالشَّيْطَانَ مَا رَزَقْتَنَا And if he grant us a child, keep Satan away from him or her. The Prophet mm-hmm. commented on that saying that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for them to have a child, he will be protected from Satan and Satan will not be able to harm him. So we have to start seeking uh, refuge uh, before the shaitan for before this conception. Child, <coughs> even before the conception. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why uh, that's one of the rights of the children upon the parents. Which I can go back and say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still have time to do that. <laughs> I, read a, I read a hadith, that is, and I don't know if it's taif or not. That's why, Allahu Akbar, you're here. But it said, um, if you want your child to be pious, you have to eat melon when you're pregnant, like cantaloupe and watermelon and stuff like this. Have you ever heard that? I really don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's hadith, you sure? No, <laughs> I think it was invented by a guy who sold melon. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was so at, the time of, of the, at the time of the birth of a child, when that child um, screams, that is when shaitan pricked that child. Exactly. And this is what the Prophet Wasallam says, that uh-huh. every child suffers the same except for He's one child. Him. That was exactly yes. the son of Mary, Jesus, peace be upon him.
And brothers, I think it's almost uh, prayer time. Uh, I would like to see and end up with this. There is a beautiful supplication in Surah Al-Furqan, which is related to our subject. Yeah. It is a supplication of the servants of the Most Merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they say, Rabbana, hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'anna lil muttaqina imana. Which means, our Lord, grant for us from among our spouses and our offspring a comfort of an eye. Wa ja'anna lil muttaqina imana. And make us leaders for the pious ones. Allahumma ameen. 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 So, Sheikh, before we break, I just want to ask, like, what about a brother who's been, has a wife, has kids, but like this brother and other brothers who are starting out, what should I do for my kids after they're born? Like, okay, we know what to do before, what to do, what, what can we do? Well, I guess, yeah, Ismail, that we can discuss after Salah, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Okay. Barakallahu uh, Same time next week, guys? Inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Okay. I want something else, I don't want a coffee. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe <laughs> we'll I have some kids. I heard that there is a masjid yeah. downstairs. Yeah, there's a masjid downstairs. Okay, so inshallah. we can just go and offer the Salah downstairs. Okay. Subhanakallah. We can have some biscuits next time. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum and see you inshallah next week. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام